that's it. We just want to win for our team. My goodness! as good as men or better it's a huge point for the bay area good chance that's the number one highlight of the week good morning planet earth you're watching mltt major league table tennis this is day number three of week number 13, and we're coming to you live from Wichita, Kansas. I'm Adam Bobro, and this is the last day before the playoff weekend come the end of the month in Chicago. Wichita, are you guys ready? All righty, then let's bring in the officials. First, we've got Jovana Knezhevich and Jorge Vanegas. And now we'll call in the first team, their first place in the league, and they are as close to qualifying as you can possibly imagine with 231 points at the top of the food chain. A warm welcome for the Bay Area Blasters! Coached by Maggie Tien, Tao Wen Zhang, El Syed La Sheen, Sinura Silva, Alexi Duan and Lily Jong. And on the other side, coming in right now in second place, they've got 212 points. Get ready for the team battling for second place, Texas Smash! Coming in first, Hiromitsu Kasahara, David Macbeth, Daryl Tsao, Nishant Labaka, Amy Wong, and Nandan Naresh, coached by Digital Cyber coach Jorg Bitsy Gayo, phoning it in from Germany. So now that all the Warriors are here, let's shake some hands and slap some skins and let the games begin. It has been a special and meaningful weekend here in Wichita. Last night, a little ceremony to celebrate the season and to honor the three Olympians. Amy Wong, Rachel Sung, Lily Jong celebrated with a cake in their honor last night. But the competition continues today and there is still plenty to determine. The Bay Area Blasters punch their ticket to the playoff officially yesterday they need one point today to clinch first place meanwhile the texas smash won the golden game against seattle last night coming from behind that was a huge six points they've got 212 10 points clear of portland top two in the west make the playoffs this is the final day of the regular season so the smash will clinch a playoff spot with 11 points and that's what we've got to look forward to today hi everybody good morning and welcome with the Hall of Famer, Sean O'Neill. I am Evan Leppler. Pretty simple for Texas. They need 11 points to qualify. Really, they need to avoid a, a disastrous effort this morning against a Bay Area team that's been really, really good this weekend. Well, Bay Area is going to be relaxed because they're in control of their own destination. They just won one point. They're going through. With Jorg Bitsugayo as the coach, I can promise you Texas is going to be fighting for each and every game. Well, Hiromitsu Kasahara has been solid. He'll be in the first single spot. But before we talk about today, let's review the, the season series between the Smash and the Blasters. Bay Area has won three out of the five, including some really big wins. They got 31 out of a possible 42 points in September and October. Texas battled back in the series. It was two all heading into February, but... Look, in, uh, in Everett, Washington, Bay Area was the buzzsaw, 18 to three. Let's revisit what happened in Santa Cruz. Take us through it, Sean. Yeah, definitely. We saw Lily coming out on top, playing extremely strong, but then back and forth between these two teams. Super exciting. This match, definitely a pick -em match because one, Texas is fighting to stay alive and to take that second spot going into the playoffs. 
Kasahara victorious there. No Jim Ma today for the Blasters. That's something to keep in mind as we get going. Tao Wen Jong is playing singles against Dave McBeth. Looking forward to that. We've got a tremendous doubleheader of Major League Table Tennis, the final day of the regular season. We're just 20 days away from the start of championship weekend in Chicago to culminate this incredible first season of Major League Table Tennis. In the nosebleed seats back there, we got this giant jumbotron up here. From time to time, I see a point that I really like, and I think it's going to look amazing with the incredible camera work we have. And I go, replay! Make sure you look up at the screen for the replay. Cheer for good points, cheer for whatever you want. If you've got favorite players, slap the chairs, stomping your feet. Doesn't work so well on the concrete over there, but the chairs, you can use your hands to bang, make some noise. Other than that, we've got two star players on court right now that I'd like to introduce to you. Representing the Texas Smash in navy blue, he comes all the way from Japan. He's strong, he's fast, he's got a fighting spirit like you wouldn't believe. He just played the national championships in Japan and is here on USA home soil. Put your hands together for Hirobitsu Kasahara! And on the other side of the table, there's a guy who comes all the way from Egypt, all the way. If you look at a map, most maps we have in the US don't even show it. It's on the other side of the globe, in Northern Africa. He's called the Arab Lion, and he's been one of the best players in Egypt for decades. Get ready for the styles and the fighting spirit of El Sayed Lashim. Alrighty, each team has three timeouts per match, and by per match, I mean team match. Only two timeouts can be used before the Golden Game, which means that during the Golden Game, each team will have one timeout left. Time We're just about ready to go here from the Coke Arena in Wichita, the home of the Shockers. And the uh, schedule for this opening match between the Blasters and the Smash looks like this. Lachine is in the A-B spot today because Jin Bao Ma gets the day off for the Blasters. Sonora Silva and Nishant Labaka, that's the battle of the dudes that began the season as Princeton Revolution now playing in the West Division. Duan and Sal will meet for the second time this season, as will Tao and Jong and David McBeth. Tao and Macbeth have not played since September. But we begin with Lachine and Kasahara, two of the top 20 players in the league by the MLTT Power Ranking metric. And uh, it's going to be an interesting contrast of styles, Sean O'Neill. Yeah, Lachine has had some difficulty this weekend so far, losing both of his First matches, play, but taking a game. Or no, zero, actually, he beat, zero, zero. beat Rachel, Rachel Sung, Sung, lost to Paul Chi. Yeah, and beating Rachel Sung 2-1. I think from Portland's perspective, that was a win for her one, to take one of the zero. games. But different styles. Lachine moved the ball around, leaves the table. Really one, strong on both four. the forehand and backhand, but kind of midcourt. Hiro Kasahara, very fast hands. Can counterattack, good serves. But it's really going to be a battle of kind of like Modern One, table tennis two. with Kasahara so quick, so fast, and then Lachine is just the experienced pro. Excellent Let's pattern play and great forehand attacks. Lachine has three of the first four. What three, do you say? One. Modern Lashine table serve. tennis. What do you mean? The way the game is played today, up to the table, very similar to Amy Wong, Lily Jung, quick off the bounce. Not a lot of power, but more speed and precision. Four, one. The easiest way to beat power is to give them less time to set up their shot. Two, four. 
Andan Naresh inactive today, but looking on from the Texas bench. Two, five. Machine trying to slow down each rally. Kazahara trying to speed it up. Like every match in the regular season, Six, 21 two. points up for grabs. And obviously, you want to win as many points as you can. But unlike the regular season, you have a, a, kind of a specific target in mind for both these teams today. Seven, and two. The area officially needs just one point to clinch first place in the division. That would set the matchup against the Princeton Revolution to start championship weekend, the second seed from the East. I'll say it, Lachine looking like he's going to take eight. care of that point pretty quick. Coming out strong. Three, eight. You see Kazahara just holding the table. Eight. This machine is in the backcourt. It's nice and safe, but moving the ball around really well. Best point of the match there for Hero so far? Yeah, just, again, staying on top, not allowing Lachine to get that forehand into play. It's so spinny Let's when Lachine steps around his backhand. Well, three, in a three in a row for Kasahara. A six-point gap in half. Bay Area bench trying to encourage Lachine. Oh, see how Hara's bounced something here late. Yeah, how fast Kasahara is able to return that first leap right off Six, the bounce. Eight. Great placement back into the backhand side, causing Lachine to have to lift his elbow to try to get around the ball. Let's. Great footwork by Lachine. So Six, quick. Nine. Kazahara right nine, off the bounce again. Seven. Not really letting the ball breathe, but taking it with his backhand down the line. Two serves with an opportunity to close out game one. Kasahara, after trailing by Nine, six, has come eight. all the way back to get within one here. And the points are going in his direction. He's having no trouble getting his attack going and backing Lachina off the table. Oh, big point really from Machine. Over the table, forehand Eight, flip ten. kill. Machine got in so quickly. Great placement out to the forehand. Oh. Okay. Gonna miss on the return. Kasahara Nine, has one more ten. serve to try to create our first golden point on this April Sunday. Oh! And it did not catch the back edge. Lachine takes game one. 11, A splendid start for the Arab Lion. And with that point, the Bay Area Blasters cannot be caught atop the West. The Blasters will be the number one seed coming out of the West Division three weeks from now at Championship Weekend, Lachine gets the Blasters to the finish line.
Look at the up to the minute standings. Bay Area Blasters. Now 20 points clear of the smash, even if Texas wins the next 20 points in this match. The Blasters have the tiebreaker, courtesy of their season-long advantage over the smash. So Texas will not finish first. The question now, Sean, is can they finish second? And look, there's some pressure on this smash. The, the Portland Paddlers, beginning of the day, 10 points behind the smash. Obviously, that's, that's not a small oh. gap, but it's also not an One. insurmountable oh. gap. Think of it this way. Portland had an 11-point edge over Texas coming into the weekend. And over the course of the last two days, Texas has gained 21 points on them. So two. yes, the smash One. have the momentum. The Paddlers have struggled, but if the Portland squad can flip the switch today. Portland One, very much could three. be in the mix. And Smash. we know the paddlers are rooting hard for the Bay Area very, Blasters. Very hard for the this morning. Blasters. And I thought this was one of those matches where if Two, Texas came out three. strong, possibly swept it 3-0, could really put a damper on Portland's three. efforts. Oh. But right now, three. Three. LSA Machine is doing a great job for both the Blasters and Portland to keep the pressure on. It's been an interesting 2024 so far for Lachine. You know, he went winless. He was swept twice Three, in January four. in Portland. But he, he certainly bounced back. He went five and one in singles matches in Seattle. He's currently three and three so far this weekend. Now four and three after the first game today. Four. Another oh. great smash the forehand over the table smash here. Expect Kazahar to drop more short oh. balls to the middle or to the backhand after seeing Five, four. Machine's two forehand attacks be so successful. Oh, again, really good footwork by Lachine. Five, Getting four. around that last ball. Again, nice topspin on the backhand Six, opening of the machine. Really setting the pace well in each one of these points. Overcooked that one. <laughs> Six, Six all. Oh. Texas, obviously. But as long as they can get five, six, seven points, that'll really put the pressure on Portland. Obviously, seven. Texas oh. could get, let's say, the eight points. Let's say they can have the eight, seven lead going into the Golden Game. Even if they lose the Golden Game, they'd have an 18 point lead and they have the tiebreaker over the Paddlers, so Portland would need 19 against Seattle. That's a really tough one. We haven't seen too many 19 to 2s this season. But Portland was involved in a 20 to 1 on the losing side, so. I don't see Seattle get beat 19 to 2 today. It's going to be interesting because they are not in the running, so depending on their mindset, Nine, do they mix up the seven. order as much as they can? But the players do have individual. There's performance incentive. exactly incentives to win every point every game and I would say even more so is we've got the draft coming up you want to have your best performances on every single nine match eight. weekend and this is the last one for the spinners to send a message to head coach and future owner that they deserve a chance at season two Sahara apologizes for the net ball, but does earn Eight, a game point. Ten. And it, it, 
feels like Kasahara has found something. He was down 8-2 in the first game, got up to 10-9. He's up 10-8 here. Certainly not done yet. Great third ball attack by Lachine. 9-10. Kasahara has to do a lot more with that serve return other than just putting it over the net. Machine battles back to 10 all. 10. Creating oh. the first golden oh, point of the day. Ready. You know what it is. Say it with me. Golden points. Yeah. Kasahara with yeah. a big forehand Kasahara. winner to take game two. Texas on the board here on this Sunday morning in Wichita. 11-9 for Lachine in game one. 11-10 for Kasahara in game two. Game three. It's going to be fun. Kasahara earns the first point of the day for Texas with a golden point victory over Lachine in game two. Smash now 11 points clear of the Paddlers in the full season standings. This is the 22nd final team match of the year in the regular season. The Smash and the Paddlers, or the Smash and the Blasters, I should say. Paddlers play the Spinners later today. Oh, Nicely what done. a beautiful open Zero, court. Two. Down the line loop by Lachine. Similar start to game one for Lachine. Five on, Just change. Great placement on the serves, mixing it up, changing the spin. Kazahara had already decided he was going to use a backhand return to serve, but Lachine able to serve it even wider. And that's the quick off the bounce backhand Two, five. by Kazahara. Two really big points here for Lachine. If he can take at least one of Let's them, he will be in the driver's seat. Oh! Wow. How well Seven, did he set two. up that ball? Could you see him playing solid backhands, looking for that opportunity to turn the corner and rip the ball down the line? A little bit of a surprise there. Kazahara popped it up, but eight. Lachine had already been stepping in. Just like game one, Lachine built an 8-2 lead. 
Now in game one, Katsuhara got back eight. into it. Was within one at 10-9. Hiramitsu gets both points on his serve. It's an 8-4 game. Eight. Four. And this is where Lachine is going to have to work for the points. Needs to take his time, move the serve around like he did in the last set, and try to land a big forehand, negating Kazahara's ability to take the ball off the bounce. Nine, see four. What it means to Lachine, 44 years young. Said yesterday he's still having fun. He wants to keep playing as long as he can. I mean, I he's just still got game. Ten. His legs don't look 44. The way he's moving around, hitting the targets. Miss hit. Five, ten. Asahara, though, a long way to go. Slew of game points for Lachine. And El Sayed Lachine with an impressive 11, performance. Takes two out of three from Hiramitsu Kasahara. Two very close games, and then Lachine with a convincing win in game three. He takes an 11-5. Back here in Wichita, and we're joined by El Sayed Lachine, who just took two out of three games from Hiramitsu Kasahara. Uh, certainly a, a very difficult uh, adjustment playing Rachel Sung on Saturday, and then Hiramitsu Kasahara on a Sunday, and yet you win both those matches. How would you describe the adjustment to playing Hiro today? First of all, I'm very happy for this, but it's big difference between a uh, women game and uh, men game. So I like when I play with Kazahara more than I play with Rachel. So it's it's like make me more interesting to play with him. It's first time, but I felt it's okay. It's a good game, not bad. You had an 8-2 lead in game one, and then he found a way to get back into it. Yeah. Ultimately, you were able to close it out. How'd you do it? I was a little bit very nervous from beginning, okay, and I get many points, but after I like uh, I become more nervous than beginning also. I become more nervous and more nervous. Then, okay, in the time when it's 9-9, 10-10, you I must be cool. So I use it and it succeeds. You've talked about your game a lot, but talk about the team. What does it mean to be part of this Bay Area Blasters? You've got some young players, some old players as yourself. How does that team dynamic really work for you guys? I'm very happy for this because it's not, uh, not my first time that we have like generations in the team. So now also in Egypt I have my team and also the team have okay have a young generation and I adapt with them I like them like my brothers so it's it's like my my normal life here I'm very happy for this and also I play in Turkey it's the same also same generation because I'm very old you know I'll say before I let you go I want to ask you about the idea of nerves and you've been playing this sport for so long all around the world has there ever been a point where you didn't get nervous before a match? If it's a hard match, I not, I'm not very nervous. But because we want to make more points here, if, because here is tension too much for the points. 
So if it's normal match, it's okay. It's a final. Who win, who we, who we go home and with a trophy, it's okay. But because here it's, they care too much about games, about points, so it's make me a little bit nervous. So you're saying you're more nervous now than you'll be at championship weekend? I think, yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, El Sayed. We'll Thank see you. you. See you. Great stuff from Lachine. And right on time, we get to Nishat Labaka. Welcome to the second <laughs> singles match, everybody. Senora Silva is certainly a favorite in this One, match. Two, zero. Certainly no fear on that forehand. Yeah. With Labaka, he is a pips out hitter. He likes to, when the ball comes over. Move your arm. Now he's being warned when the players serve the ball, One, they cannot zero. shield it from the opponent. It must be clearly visible throughout the toss, both upwards and downwards. One, and as you said, four. Evan, Silva is the favorite, but in a style matchup, I really see that Labaka, with his forehand smash, could give Silva a lot of difficulties, but he's going to have to get past one. the serve and serve return. Silva has very tricky serves and his first attack. Look at that counter kill. Two, because two. Silva had the point in his hand, but Labaka, so quick with the forehand smash. Well, it's funny, Sean. This is the first meeting Two, between Labaka three. and Silva, but they've had eerily similar journeys. They're both still teenagers. Nishant grew up in the northeast of the U.S. in New Jersey. Three, oh. Senora Silva from Sri Lanka, now in college in Texas. But now she was drafted in the inaugural MLT2 draft. Silva signed as a free agent by Princeton in September and then picked up full time by the Blasters in October. Meanwhile, Nishant Labaka signed as a free agent in December for the crossover weekend for the Revolution. And he performed well. Oh, he played awesome Left. through Down the eye Hill. of the Texas staff and Jorg Bitsigayo signing Labaka when they were in a pinch needing a player. And played big yesterday, getting a number of points in the Four. Golden Game. Just oh. we, we've seen some other free agents come aboard around the league and look overwhelmed at times. Understandably, like you were not drafted, everybody else was. There's a talent gap, there's a confidence gap. Five, it's hard four. to be a drafted free agent and find your footing. And yet these two guys have never really looked like free agents at any point during the season. Especially Silva, who has become one of the top players in the league. And that backhand Five. has been Five. one of the many reasons for Silva playing off the table, but just pulling that backhand across his body. Five. Five. The back style is very difficult to have good timing against, because on that forehand with the pips out rubber, it's so flat, there's not a lot of rhythm. He's trying to finish the ball as quickly as possible. And he plays a very stable backhand generally, where he just keeps Six. it in play. Six and then goes for the big forehand when possible. But Silva, great focus, great concentration in each and every game in these matchups. Six, seven. Oh, that was a great push by Silva. Kept it low. Eight. Nice six. and deep. Not easy to lift with those forehand pips out rubber. And now Silva, a little bit of breathing space. Nine, six. He's just so steady. Never beats himself. Always plays within his capacity. And part of that is just the, the ability to six, maintain ten. your focus. It really is, and he loses one point, possibly a second point. He slows down, takes his time. Look at this. What a strong finish to game one. Folks around the nation are excited about the eclipse that's coming tomorrow. Sonora Silva has been the eclipse for Major League Table Tennis, this rare phenomenon that has come from nowhere and stunned the table tennis world. See if the, the nickname sticks. 
Tenora Silva, the Eclipse? Maybe, maybe not. He's got a 1-0 lead, that's for sure. Blasters have a 3-1 lead, set. courtesy of El Sayed Lachine taking Best two out of serve, three. Zero, zero. And Sonora Silva winning the opening game over Nishant Labaca. Silva was down 6-5 and won the final six points to close that game out. Labaca back on track to start game two. One, oh. What do you think Smash. of the nickname The Eclipse for I think Sonora it works. Silva? Timely. Sean, what would you say is, is the equivalent in the Two. sport of table One. tennis to an eclipse? Uh, a rare thing that doesn't happen very often, but when it does happen, it's shocking and spectacular. Yeah, I just Two. think with China Two. losing. Uh, yeah, we had, an, we had a match at the last World Championships where India had China on the ropes in the women's division, which just never happens. Two, but three. I anticipate with season one under his belt, we are gonna see Sonora Silva regularly at every single match. And it will not be once in the next four, 34 years two. for him to shine again. I did bring my glasses with me. But it, it might be 44 years before you see someone from the free agent pool join a team after the season starts and end the year in the top five or top ten of the power rankings. Absolutely, from that standpoint, Four, I know, three. looking back at the combine where all the players gave their coaches the first chance to see them, that Sonora was upset by one of the younger females, Kayla Goodwin, who played Four, exceptionally well. Oh. But after that match, I think a number of the coaches felt that Sonora might have been better in season two, but he's clearly made the most of his opportunity, both for the revolution Five, and then four. being grabbed by Maggie Tian to be a mainstay of Blasters. Sonora Silva, his season goes like this. He went four, three and three in singles six. as a free agent in Daytona Smash. Beach as a member of the revolution. Then in October, he made his debut with the Blasters. He went three and three in singles in that opportunity in Houston, hey! Texas. What? And in Pleasanton, Five, he played in six. all three matches. He went six and three. The crossover event going against the East Division, he went five and four in singles. And remember, West Division players did not have a ton of success overall against East Division players, but Silva Seven, finished five. above 500. He went six and three in singles in Portland. And then he went 6 and 0 oh in singles in Seattle. He's been solid, if not spectacular, in the Golden Games throughout the season as well. It's just like Seven, at some six. point you've come to expect this excellence. Again, which is astonishing because A, he's 18, and two, B, he was A and 2. He wasn't drafted. That was a, a buzz from <laughs> Home Alone moment for me right there. 6 there. 8. Just so dependable, and I think he adds so much excitement to the Bay Area Blasters. Truly being young Six, and full of energy. Nine. Anytime there's a super serious moment, 
especially as they're coming into these very tight matches. You can count on Sonora to bring Ten, six. some humor, some excitement, but most important, his level of fight and focus. Trying to take Ten, game number seven. two here to really open up. Lavaca gets it to 10-8. He's got a couple of serves here on his paddle. Opportunity to win both points and get it to a golden point. Missed it. And Silva takes game two. 11, a little eight. bit tighter than game one, Smash but the result Carl. stays the same. And Silva's excellence stays the same. Sonora did not play here for the Blasters on Friday night. But on Saturday, he was excellent. Had a good start to Sunday, too. Well, it's a 2-0 lead for Sonora Silva here in the second single spot. Meanwhile, the fun police have arrived here to Wichita. Nishant Labaka just got a yellow card for showing a little frustration. He did slightly more than place his paddle on the table at the end of Zero that one. game, losing 11-8. He hit the shot wide. He kind of, from about a foot away, threw the paddle on the Let's table. I would gently lobbed it. I would personally be okay with that being fine and not potentially costing Texas a One point if it happened again. Here's what happened. We'll get back to it when we can, perhaps in the towel check. At six points in. Meanwhile, Lavaca trying to salvage One, a point for two. the smash. And look, if he doesn't, they're down 5-1. Texas. Starting to feel a little bit of pressure, Sean. I mean, yeah, no, I, I see. Three, one. <laughs> not, not, not exactly the most violent of actions from Labaka, but uh, apparently that's a yellow card in modern table tennis. Just trying to defend the play sport, one. Sean. Come trying on. to keep the players under control. They don't want to have it become a. He's not exactly a raging bull in a china <laughs> shop there. I mean, are you kidding me? Keeping the players Two, under control. Four. What is this? I'll move on. Five two change. Silva saying after that last point, the ball is not coming out. So then step in. Don't wait for it. Edge yep. point for Labaka and six, a six two lead two. here in game three. Labaka likes that type of backhand to backhand exchange. Not a lot of risk, but just keeps it on the table. He knows that if Silva steps around that ball, he's gonna get a chance to step around himself. Seven to deliver his favorite forehand smash. Oh, and I'm going to credit Labaka for staying Two, with that shot eight. after the 
ball went out to his forehand. He kept on it, hustled to get the chop in. Labaka. Your two, nine. Now leads nine to two here in game and three. This is really huge for yeah, it really is. Texas because this could have been the way things were looking. Oh, a 3 0 sweep. Nine, three. Which, especially thinking of Kazahara being the favorite against Lachine. This Ten, could affect the power three. rankings a little bit for. Silva. Let's he said he was perfect in the last he's matchup gonna, he's gonna ever. Go, he's going to go five and one in singles this weekend. He's going to be 34 and 14 in singles for the season. Eleven, it's a nice three. win for Nishant Labaka, no doubt. But uh, maybe the yellow card got him a little fired up. Imagine if he slammed his paddle into the table. Literally have to call the authorities. Nishant Labaka earns a point for the smash. It could be a critical one at the end of the day. Now raise your hand if you know what the golden game is. Okay, awesome. The golden game is crazy exciting. It's like the last two minutes of an NBA basketball game because everything is that much more important. All five players who played on each team, so a total of 10, will come back for the Golden Game in a tag team sort of event. It'll be a game to 21 points, must win by one, and 2020 would be the ultimate Golden Point. And it's winner takes all. Six points for the winning team. No four, two, five, one, three, three, none of that. Six, zero, Golden Game. So we come into the doubles now. If you've never seen professional table tennis before, in doubles, players must alternate shots. That means hit the ball, get out of the way, but not so far out of the way that you can't come right back to play the next ball. So left-handed, right-handed combination. Bay Area Blasters have a 4-2 lead over the Texas Smash. Sonora Silva just won two out of three games. Sonora joins us now. Congrats, Sonora. Thank Strong you. start. I'm sure not the third game you envisioned. Uh, what was the story of that match with you and Nishan? Uh I don't know. I mean, honestly, I didn't. I didn't want to play with this guy because it's it's because of his record and uh, it's so many things. And I I prefer play with uh, Daryl more than uh, Lebaka. But it's okay. I played well. I won the game. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, v very difficult against this pips out player because no matter what you do, he's always just one shot away of playing his favorite shot. Yeah, and um, the, the ball doesn't come to me like when he blocks. It's very slow and I cannot adjust to the. I that's that's my weakness. This game I couldn't adjust to the ball. Yeah, so. it, it seems like on his forehand it's so much power, yeah. so flat. But then on the backhand he slows it down, so it's really putting a stress on yeah. your footwork. So. What happens if you face him in the golden game? What adjustments will you make there? I will just uh, give it some time and let the ball come to me and I just go for like some power shots and I'll find his weakness before his, uh, before the golden game, yeah. Sonora, if you're in the match against Princeton three weeks from now, mm -hmm. you'll probably play against either Koyo, Prashepa, or DeSant Delon. Who would you be most excited to play I against? Would love Which to one play of your with former teammates? I would love to play with Prashepa. Yeah. Why? Because uh, very clean game and uh, like very good footwork. Uh, it will be uh, it will be so many uh, good rallies. What uh, what will you do between now and championship weekend to sharpen your game and stay focused? Uh, after this weekend, I have college nationals in Wisconsin, so I have to fly for that and come back to school, then get ready for Chicago. Yeah. Sounds busy. Enjoy some cheese curds while you're in Wisconsin, Ooh, sure. and uh, we'll see you in Chicago. Yeah. Thanks, Sonora. Thank you. Time to shift toward the doubles, and it's Tawan Jong and Lily Jong against Hiro Kasahara and Amy Wong. Tao and Lily play together here on Friday, and then Lily played with Jinbao yesterday. Meanwhile, Hiro Mitsu Kasahara and Amy Wong have had a very solid weekend. They took two out of three from Jiwei and Rachel in the Portland match on Friday, and then swept Olajide and Fabiola 3-0 so Kasahara and Wong have been the class of the doubles department so far. We'll see if that continues. Texas could certainly use two or three points here to help their cause to get toward the postseason. First game, Blasters to serve, 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh. 
We're going to see a lot of this, Evan, where both Amy and Hero love to play over the table, especially on the backhand side with the serve return. Expect the Blasters to be covering the court Two, primarily zero. with their forehand. Lily likes to play up to the table, but in doubles, she's been doing exceptionally well on the forehand side. And look at that, Amy Wong, backhand bullet. Three, zero. Do not want to let any of these pushes hang up in the air. Another reminder about that time it was hand over the table. Wow. A mention of the serve and then One, a drilling three. of the serve into the net. Sahara took a wary look toward his bench. His bench responded with positive energy. Got a loose ball on the court. One, Silva again three. comes up big. This guy does it all. Do you, you expect some order to be part of the college four. championship before an MLTT championship, possibly? Well, he, he'll be one of the top two players. Of course, teammate Jonathan McDonald, also from Texas Wesleyan. Right. I would not be surprised if both of those players made it to the semis or finals and played against each other. Four, two. Of course, there's a team event for National Collegiate Table Tennis Association, which is co-ed. Which is very unique, similar to MLTT, where the ladies get a chance to play against male counterparts, whether it's in the Golden Game, doubles, as you saw with Rachel, Sun playing singles against the Five, two. Great forehand by Lily John. Three, five. to sit down with Lily for a little interview earlier this morning. Not only is she a fantastic player who's had a story Three, career, but she can, she can weave a story. She's a, a, a great talker at the microphone. Obviously, she's had a lot of experience. She'll be a four-time Olympian this summer in Paris. Seven, three. She's just 27 years old. She'll be 28 in June. She was an Olympian for the first time. She qualified when she was 15, and she was an Olympian at age 16 in 2012 in London. Eight, three. It's, uh, it's an incredible journey that she has been on in the table tennis world, and she's still riding the wave, enjoying every moment. Whoa! And the Texas Smash have just put on a power clinic three, here. Nine. They sure have. Four, nine. Nice hustle there by Lily to get Five, Amy's nine. diagonally placed forehand push onto the table. Wow. So Obviously, Ten, Tao kept five. on alive while losing his paddle. If if Lily had hit, hit a winner there, they, they would win the count it? Yeah, Lily's ball was in play. The question was, if Lily could have put it on and they just returned it, what was Tao going to use to try to play that ball back? You, you use your palm without a paddle in your hand? That's not legal, I imagine. You have to have a paddle in one hand. 11-5 for Texas in game one as the doubles duo of Kasahara and Wong continues to cook.
like you flew here from Egypt. Are you playing at a local club? I'm a matchmaker. We are going to find you a club to play at today. Texas Yoshi now 13 Eight. points right. clear Back. of Portland. Game two of the Paddlers Let play Seattle at 2 p.m. Central time Second today. Game. Smash the serve. Zero, zero. Amy Wong and Mitsu Kasahara trying to further dampen zero, Portland's one. enthusiasm by taking care of business, playing doubles. A flying lily coming <laughs> across oh. the table. Look at this forehand from Kasahara from deep off the table. Kasahara and Wong playing different dimensions sometimes. With one deep in the backcourt, one in the forecourt, right at the table. And somehow one, finding two. the rhythm. And Amy is so quick up at the table that it gives Kasahara a chance to kind of float around Watch the point develop during the rally. Three, one. So wow. solid at that Four, forehand smash. One. Not only can she loop the ball off the bounce, but anything that's a pop-up. And yesterday she said her strategy was to try to get it back on the table. table right, which Come on. Two, four. But for her getting it on the table is basically a rip off the bounce. <laughs> Very similar to Kazahara, who likes to play with quick tempo, a lot of speed, and no hesitation. You can't second guess yourself if you're going to play like Amy Wong or Hiro Kazahara. That's a nice deep push there by Amy. Very aggressive. Tao Wenjong able to Three, get under that ball, four. lift it up, turn it into a nice forehand topspin. <laughs> Amy just steps around, unleashes her Five, backhand. Three. Off the bounce. So smooth. Lily made a great forehand loop, Six, and Amy three. just ran into it with a stronger counterattack. Well placed into the middle of the table. Four, six. Well, what would you advise Tao and Lily right here? Because you know, they're not playing poorly, but they're getting outplayed. Yeah, you really have to make sure that the ball that you're playing is deep enough to where either Hero or Amy can't drive it moving forward. Five, you want to back them up a little bit to take some of the pace off their shot. Or to just mix up the spin, change the spin. Don't give them the same ball that they can really tune in for. And those are the, some good serves there by Tao. Oh. It's not unusual for Amy or for Hero to get a little bit streaky because when they, their shots are landing, there's nothing you can do. So you just have to weather the storm and keep that ball in play. But again, mixing it up, that's a beautiful backhand Seven, side six. spin. Push there by Amy Wong, finding the wide forehand. Really? Seven. Putting some oh. pressure on the third ball. Excellent choice. Oh. And that's an example, Evan. Really served that long on purpose. Eight, seven. Nice and deep. You can see Amy when she lifted up. It was more of a jamming type of shot. Now has the lead. Tao wants that one back. Eight, eight. He had exactly the forehand that Lily set him up for. The idea that every point counts is eight, certainly critical eight. in many ways right here. Difference between four all and five three in the team tally. Yeah. And the last is back up by one. Amy served eight got away nine. from her, trying to keep it short, just went off the end. Allowing Tao and Jung to get that first attack in. Oh! Nice.
Nein, oh. Nein, nein. Nine, that ball came off the side of the table, spun it up, used the angle to his advantage, and really put a lot of pressure on Lily Jung out to the forehand. Nine, ten. Game point for Texas. Go! And the smash have taken the first two games of the doubles. They're even overall in the match. Deep return or deep serve here from Tao Wen Zhang and Kasahara was ready for it. Returning it right at Zhang, the smash. Back even. Texas began the day 10 points ahead of Portland zero, zero. with four of the first eight points, including two straight in the doubles. The smash now 14 points ahead of the paddlers on this final day of the regular zero, season. One. Texas can officially clinch a playoff spot with 11 points in this match. Even if they get seven or eight, they will really zero, force two. the paddlers to have Epic day against Seattle. Now, as Sean has mentioned, the spinners have been eliminated, so we don't totally know what their mentality will be, but they still have personal incentives to play for, oh! plus an immense amount of pride Three, after a full zero. season battling against the very best players across the league. And Sean, as you mentioned earlier, also every opportunity One, on the table is three. a chance to show you're worthy for next season because th those are conversations and debates that are happening right now and I, I really think that it's when maybe you don't have anything to play Three. for but pride is when the coaches aren't looking the most in case they want to have a trade or if you do go back into the pool what type of player do you want to add to your team who regardless of the score is out there fighting to win every point possible. 12 teams have traded 3-0 runs at the start of game three. Oh. Amy Wong <laughs> has done that a bunch Four, of times. We three. could put a pretty good reel together of Amy's smashing Top winners. Top 10 smashes. Amy's finishing blows. 5-3, oh. change. You missed it at the top of the show. Amy, along with Lily Jong and Rachel Sung, were celebrated last night by the entire MLTT West Three, Division community. Five. Yes. All players and coaches were told that there was a mandatory meeting in the hotel lobby last night, just before 10 o'clock local time, when folks got back after the conclusion of the day. And uh, folks did not know what exactly it was going to be. I know a few people in the know tried to make it seem like it was very serious. Maybe something had gone wrong. And uh, of course, 
It was just a celebration of the season, a, a tone of appreciation, and especially to pay tribute three. to the three female players from the West Division that have already qualified to participate in the Olympics this summer. And the cake, I understand, was Eight, the brilliant three. idea of one Sean O'Neill. Definitely want to give the ladies their kudos for playing great in the trials. Of course, Lily made the team Four, based on eight. her international ranking, which came down to the wire for her to win a tournament, a WTT feeder in Manchester. So all these ladies have just been a great addition. We look forward to That's the ladies playing against each other next season in head-to-head -head matches in singles play. So can't wait to follow them. Of course, Nikhil is also still in the running for Paris as he'll go Four, down to Lima, nine. Peru. Footage from the hotel last night, a lot of smiles. Y it was your idea to, to get the cake. Did you design yes. the cake as well? Yes. Little combination nine, of five. chat GPT. I put some profiles in there <laughs> and I said three great female players with great attacks and strong forehands and backhands and it pumped out. A wonderful design. It was awesome. Nine, six. Timeout, smash. Texas going to take a timeout here. First timeout of the day. Ooh, timeout called here by Texas. Three point smash. lead for the smash. Not wanting to let this get any closer. This, this is the nail that you want to put in the coffin. More important than anything else. It's pretty incredible to watch, and you'll have a chance to see her playing at two o'clock. Again, not into singling anyone out, but if you look at where I'm standing and where I'm pointing at the same time, you might notice someone, I don't want to mention any names, but Fabiola Diaz is her name, and she'll be playing at 2 o'clock later on, so make yeah. sure you enjoy it. And yeah, if you keep short, then you keep short, if you give long, then yeah. Tyler, still a chance. And everybody yeah, wants no to be involved in Man, season two. Season number one has what been incredible. You're the warrior. But we've already <laughs> had applications <laughs> even from top <laughs> ten players <laughs> in the so world cool. to so join. Cool. I People often want to know how you good you is the U.S. in table yeah. tennis? How strong is this league? Of course I can. There are players here that played the quarterfinals at major <laughs> international events <laughs> and represented at the world championships for many different countries. Let's go, let's go. Including Australia, the United States. Ale, ale, ale. All sorts of them. So on that note, a lot to look forward to here. Back from the timeout, Texas smash two points away from taking a clean sweep. Nine, six, smash. Amy Wong back to work. Oh, yeah. Again, just a smart play by Amy. Six, ten. Didn't go for anything crazy, but really measured where Tao was camping out, got it back out to the forehand side. Strong stuff from the Texas LL doubles team. Kasahara and Wong win eight of their nine games for the weekend. Certainly a strong statement as Texas takes one step closer to officially punching its ticket to the championship weekend. And when they get there, they'll have a doubles team to contend with. Kasahara and Wong. Complete the sweep. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm very surprised when the old guy had two strong teams that looked like he was going to be going. He went right down to the wire. And now Texas Smash is the front. Texas Smash, how do you feel, Anita, about Texas Smash being in front? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. My hearing's terrible. Could you say it a little louder one more time? How would you know? You're just a fan with a Texas Smash shirt. Yeah. <laughs> the fans, it's amazing. The fans will go so far. They will follow online on Instagram and social media, watch live from around the world. You know, MLTT is streaming around the world. They've got their own YouTube channel. They're on Fulu, which you can find. That's the uh, Amazon one. They've got Bally's. They're on TV right now. Check this out. Pretty cool. Nice, front row VIP seats, anything you want to say to your fans? It's your chance. Oh, oh we did, but I'm going to run over and get you. All right, this is you, this is you. Say something cool, folks. We're back after a Texas smash sweep in the doubles. Amy Wong and Hiramitsu Kasahara 
win three games pretty convincingly, and Amy joins us now. Amy, a, a really strong weekend for you and Hero, winning eight of the nine games in the doubles. What worked for you two this weekend? Um, I think the more we play with each other, the better we get. I think um, we trust each other more, so I think trust and reliability on each other is what makes us a great partner. How have you improved playing together from where you started? I mean, you played with a lot of different players this year, a bunch with David, now with Hero, but you and Hero specifically, what has improved with the two of you throughout the season? I think for me and Hero, um, we both play a bit faster in the table. Um, and I think when I play with them, I try to control more. Usually when I'm playing, I feel like I'm the one being the mo more aggressive one, but I I think when I play with Hero, I trust him and rely on him more to win most of the points, so I just try to get the ball on the table. <laughs> okay, also during the beginning of the season, it seemed like both you and Lily were a little bit tentative or more afraid of the Golden Game. Are you feeling that that is a lot easier now that you've had so many opportunities to play in the Golden Game? Not really. I still feel really nervous when I play the Golden Game, no matter who I play with because it's only four points and those four points can make a huge difference for our team so when i play i get really nervous but i'm glad that my teammates are there for me well you and hero earned three big points for your team to put your team in front take another step closer to the playoffs best of luck clinching that playoff spot and, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you in chicago in a few weeks thanks amy thank you Back to singles, Sean, and an interesting matchup here. Daryl Sal, the young American, against Alexi Duan, representing the Bay Area Blasters. Duan, the 26-year-old from Paris. These two played back in January. Daryl won two games to one. I think that might have been Daryl's first win of the year. I think first it was where he played. chalked up that Smash first win. Sir. He had won games, Zero. but he had Zero. won a match. And he's been a, a stronger player in the second half of the season. Certainly you would expect that from a young teenager. Daryl just zero. turned 17 in March. Neither of these players oh. competed yesterday. Both played on Friday and were inactive yesterday. The nice thing about Alexi's weekend, you can ask One, him who, who you face in singles, and you can just say Sal, because he played Andrew Sal, C-A-O, on Friday. He's got Daryl Sal, T-S-A-O, on Sunday. Nice Three, Conveniently one. to be able to recap it. And we've had Sal efficiency. versus Sal. Yes, we have. In one of the earlier matches where Daryl took the victory. Four, one. That was an upset when Daryl beat Andrew. I remember that. Yeah, because oh. Andrew's been a tad stronger. Daryl having a strong start One, today. Five. five one lead for the Texas teenager. Wow. One. Chris strokes. Really, what we've seen here in Wichita, the number of backhand winners seems has been maximized, and that's a nice combination here by Duan. Seven, one. <laughs> we'll hear the fans calling for a replay. They saw it on the Jumbotron upstairs. Wow, what a start Eight, for Daryl Sal. One. Two on. One, trying to find nine. something right now, but very little is working for the Frenchman. Well, that'll work. Right on Two, cue, ripping nine. the backhand winner. Nine 
one to nine three. Does does Alexi still nine, believe three. that Downey can win this game? No, he's probably going to be going for bigger shots just because the high risk, high reward, trailing by so many challenges. Daryl's got two serves, and he's going to make the point happen Ooh. the way he wants it to be set up. Ten, three. Sao closes it out 11 to 3. Certainly expected closer, but Daryl Sao was the sharper player. Calm, cool, and composed. Daryl Sao rolls in game number one over Alexi Duan. What Second impressed game, you most about Daryl South's serve, performance in zero, game number one? Zero. Just dealing with the pressure, there is so much more on Texas that they've got to get as many points as possible. And Daryl just went out and played. He wasn't one, looking around. Zero. He wasn't questioning himself. Just one point after the next, staying focused, getting his Let's A game into play, and that one backhand loop from the backcourt, that was tremendous. One, zero. Smasher are in position now. Even if they lost every point the rest of the day, maybe Juan coming Juan. back to win here, David Macbeth coming up empty against Tao, and then losing the Golden Game. Even if all that happened, Portland would need to beat Seattle 17 to 4 to overtake Texas. So you kind of like Juan, the Smasher's chance, chances. And really, this match turned with the doubles. Kasahara and Wong. And I, I would say, Evan, even the game before with Nishant Nabaka. Yeah, you're, it's a good point. Stopping the sweep Three, by Silva. Would have been 5-1. Set the tone for that doubles match going out saying, hey, we could have been swept. But instead, here's a little present. Take it and run with it. It was 4-1. Now five straight points for Texas after falling behind 4-1. Three, one. two. And how, how strong was Amy and Hero putting their lightning speed off the bounce play against the Blasters. And look at that, Daryl Sal. Three, oh. Beautiful counter attack with the forehand. Smash, six. Finding the open court, wide backhand. Alexi needs to figure out a way to stop Daryl from having these big swings. Three, four. The other element, Evan, that we really haven't spoken about Five, is... Five, three. Let's say that both these teams are going into the playoffs, which most likely they both will. Do you want to go into it off of a loss, or do you want to have a little momentum, especially Five, from the head-to-head -head perspective? Texas is really finding their rhythm. Oh, great backhand opening Five, attack Five. by Daryl Sal. Taking advantage of a serve that came off the side of the table. Well placed into the body. Six, five. 
Both players going for very big shots. Alexi showing Six. his oh. backhand prowess. Excellent play. Daryl opting, opting to get into a backhand to backhand <coughs> exchange, but Alexi very powerful off the bounce. Oh, Smart. Good shot by Daryl. Getting his forehand Seven, into six. play. Blasters, timeout. Daryl is so adept at playing that forehand both down the line and cross court. Timeout for Maggie Tien's Bay Area Blasters. What do you want? There's some point. That was more musical so than you, you expected, right? Because we were talking, like, like, refresh my memory like on your name one more time. Have some plan. Ready for first and last. Corey and Sheila. Last, it feels like it's been forever. My goodness. Corey and Sheila. Have some plan. So, think guys over here, staff, Jeremy, I know some of you have driven in, Alexander. Talk to me. They're looking for places to play nearby. They said, I don't think Wichita has a club. Does Wichita have a club? Alexander, you got to let us know where it is. These people over here are getting inspired. They want to play. They're watching. They're thinking, I want to be them. I want to play next season. How do I get in? I got a dream. Right, Yoshi and Amy took because a break right now. People in the back. Up, I know you want to pick or They're up there. Okay. okay Raise your hand if you want to start playing more table tennis. When you lose yeah. the first ball, it's not yes. Fun. Okay. So good. He's a forehand. He's a backhand side. Back, side. side. Huh? back so for the final on. one on. point game here. Daryl Tao and Alexi Dewan. Six. Seven, blaster to serve. Good serve from Alexi there. Seven, oh. Point for Duan. How did he stay in it? Oh my goodness. Eight, eight. Daryl unleashed three amazing attacks, and Duan just kept the ball going back. Spider Man. I guess that would have been due to his spidey sense in order to keep that ball eight. in play. Just the pose falling down, somehow keeping his balance. Eight all. And a lead to Duong here in game two. Nine. Very effective eight. timeout. Change the rhythm. Portland coach Christian Lily Rose sneaking in through the curtains. Rooting for the blasters for sure. Oh my wow. goodness, that caught the net and then the edge and it sets eight. up game Done. point. You gotta be kidding me. Look at this. When it rains, clink, it clink. pours. Everything correct, yeah. Eight, ten. A net would be bad enough, but then to double down and get the edge. Sal fights off one game Nine, point. Nine, ten. Fight off a second. Alexi Duan has evened up this match at one game apiece. Lost the opening game 11 3, but battles back in game two. Texas leads 6 5 overall. Big rubber game coming up.
Daryl and Alexi are uh, going the distance. When they played ah, in January, Daryl won the first game. two games, game and then Alexi three. salvaged third the third. So it's the first serve. rubber game between zero, these two zero. this season. Who do you lean toward as we get rolling here, Sean? I would say Alexi just because momentum finishing game two. A lot of focus zero, in the Bay one. Area. Blasters bench during the end of game discussion. One, oh. Daryl with an excellent backhand block down the line. One, two. Game one Four, for Daryl Sal, strong start. Just getting his offense into play off of both service games. Okay. Two, four. Sean, you may remember yesterday I said that on Sunday, I was going to ask you for your championship weekend prediction. Now, I'm going to wait to ask you until we officially know which teams are going. But Five, two, change. we're closing in. So I just want to make sure you are considering all the variables, just like you always would for your fantasy team. Exactly. Uh, but I, I'm curious two, five. what factors will be foremost on your mind and be thinking about specific matchups and tendencies and momentum and all that sort of stuff. So, oh, let's see, Duan <laughs> leaving everything on Six, the floor two. here in Wichita, throwing his body around, Brassier style. And speaking of the East Coast region, I would say one factor is the East Coast has played in Chicago once. And why does that matter? A little bit of just comfort of going to the same city. Of course, a lot of these players Seven, on the East two. Coast are traveling from Europe. So getting here, Duan, of course, from France also. Not easy traveling completely halfway around the world like Lachine to come play matches where, whether it's in New Jersey, Daytona Three, Beach, it's a much seven. shorter trip, easier to get acclimated. But I think for me, the two teams, the Revolution and Carolina, have been so stable. We haven't seen as much up and down. Four, of course, seven. Revolution started slow. I'll grant you that. But they have just been on a tear for the second half of the season that, just like we saw in Rock Hill, I would say that the East have a chance to hold the upset 
and pass Seven, over one five. two. Semi-final. Yeah, I would pause it. Time out, smash. Would it be an upset for Princeton to beat the Bay Area Blasters? I'm not sure. I, I, I think I consider Princeton to be the favorite going into that match. I mean, but at reasonable minds could disagree. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that's uh, why you're this telling me to remind you the second ball change. Yeah. Don't play two balls to back in the second ball change. And stay up, don't back up and try to play for You can take, touch your back and you're back and back in there. And you change. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You don't, don't overheat, stay. Stay. Andrew Sal. This guy right here, that's his favorite player, the one yep. and only. He'll be playing at 2 o'clock later on today. He's got his headphones on so he can stay down. focused. Am I right? That's good. Yes, sir. Yeah. I yeah. Wow. yeah. Get your says, legs oh, Get your legs ready. The last one you missed, you're like serving it like this. Get Kids are raised well in Andrew's part of the world. He said uh, to commit, <laughs> still commit to whatever decision you make, just go. The manners there are unbelievable. Yeah. Stay up. And yeah, yeah. You got it. Okay. You're winning this match. Table tennis, by the way. Ivy, come on. You guys can go playing in the basement, playing at home, playing at the club. If you need to mix it up, take it to the next level, come home and practice with each other, and then come train again at the club. That's the way to do it. Back from the timeout. Go back to that Princeton Bay Area question. Well, I, th I think the bottom line is, are both teams going to be at Seven, full strength? Five, are they going to be bringing the their absolute best team members? I would hope so for the championship, but you're right. It, that is something to consider whether it's anything to do with nice shot by Daryl. We've seen a number of eight, players under eight, the weather five. throughout the season. Had some players dealing with some minor injuries. Of course, when you're having kids, that's not easy. When we've had like players like David Macbeth Six, miss time eight. due to the birth of his first Blessings. child. So. And we will see, but we could, we could get the two new dads with Jin Chin and Dave if they. Then we could play Who's Your Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> see whose dad's Six, strength is greater. Nine. Oh, what a combination by Daryl Sal. Ten, six. As Nandan Naresh said, you can go backhand to backhand with him during the coaching break, and certainly he did in that example. Game point for Sao to finish this match, and he's got it. 11 6. Strong two, stuff one, from the 17 year old from Fremont, California. Daryl Sao takes two out of three and carries the momentum forward for Texas. They are one point away from clinching a lead going into the Golden Game. We'll chat with Daryl in just a moment. Welcome back to Wichita, where the Texas Smash have now taken a 7-5 lead. Daryl Sal with strong work. First singles win of the day for the Smash. Daryl, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. For the second time this season, you got the better of Alexi. Yeah. Uh, kind of a seesaw match. You were dominant in games one and three. What was working for you today? Uh, I think I was just sticking to the game plan, just serving just more flat spin because Alexi likes to play this banana and likes to play this rally thing, especially the back and back end. That's what he... That's what he excels at, so I think we're trying to avoid that this match. So, Daryl, we don't know the final 
order of which teams are going through. You guys are looking really strong. Assuming that you do qualify for the playoffs, what will you do between now and Chicago in three weeks to get prepared for those matches? Uh, I think just preparing our matches, like since we will know by the end of this weekend who we might play in this championship weekend, so we can prepare the potential opponents that we might play. So maybe like strategize a little bit and just working on some problems that I might have. Daryl, you're, you're certainly not the only player in the league that's both a high school student and a professional athlete. But as you've gone through the season, what has it been like, you know, going from high school class and homework to being back to professional training and competition? Uh, it's been really, really busy. Um, just balancing schoolwork and um, just training in general. Sometimes school takes a little. It's more important. Sometimes training is more important. It just depends on what. It's just. Tough, tough days ahead. Yeah. Do your teachers have an appreciation for your table tennis skill? Uh, they don't really watch, actually, because I don't. I tend not to tell my teachers what I do, so I just like to keep it like just private. Well, if you can win the championship in three weeks, then you got to go back home and tell them, show them the trophy, and maybe your check as well. Yeah, I think I have to show my my dad actually, because he told me before this weekend that we have no chance. So, what do you got to say, Dad? Now, wow. Yeah, I love the little the trash, trash talk, talk to the dad. Why did he think you had no chance? Uh, I don't know. Just based on looking at our score, we were like a little bit behind, maybe, and maybe he thought that we couldn't make it. But almost well, there now. Yeah. Portland, even if you don't score another point, we need to beat Seattle 18 to three. Yeah. And if you guys win the Golden Game, or Dave McBeth gets you to the finish line here, you're you're very close. Congrats on a good win today, Daryl. We'll see you in the Golden Game. Thank right, you. Thank you. Daryl's dad's a doubter. One, oh. I love the uh, reminding his dad of his own words. I mean, look, there were One, 11 two. points out of a playoff spot coming into the weekend. If, if Portland had beaten them soundly in the first match, yeah, it would have been over. Over. They knew that they, as David Macbeth said, they had their back up against the wall. But they won that match 16 to 5, and that truly set the Two. tone. They oh. also became just the fourth team in this calendar year to come from behind and win a Golden Game against Seattle last night. Which takes me to my random nugget of the day. Two. With that Three. win, the Texas Smash have more Golden Game comeback wins than any other team in the league. We know how rare it is. It's only happened 18 times across the 86 Three, matches oh. so far where a team has trailed going into it and come back. Four of those 18 comebacks are from the Texas Smash. And I think, Evan, what all the coaches and players have learned, if you're going to win one game in the entire match, Three, make it the Three. golden game. Because as we first started out, a lot of the teams were really focused on the singles and doubles and almost not an afterthought. Three, but maybe four. they let their guard down a little bit. They felt they had some breathing space. But the golden game has been where it's at, and clearly in the playoffs, it'll be everything. Uh, there, there is the format four. change oh. in the playoffs. The golden game no longer being worth six points. The golden game is worth everything. And the opening 15 points will determine how big a lead a team has going into the Golden Game. I think the intensity of those semifinal Golden Four, Game, they're just going to be absolutely off the charts. Well, also, if you think about this, the matches after the doubles, you do not want to start down 9-0, 7-0, or even maybe at 10. So well, we know how significant a 5 nothing lead is. 7-0 right. lead, Four. you know, just adds exponential difficulty Plus to the team trailing. Plus the order that the coaches get to choose being the second pick really changes the dynamics as well. You get to choose your matchup. Six, five. All right, we're 11 points in here with Macbeth and Tao Wenjong. First meeting between these two since September. They played in Santa Cruz and Town won three straight. Yeah, forehand to Seven, forehand exchange five. by Macbeth. Nice short back swings by Macbeth, able to keep the ball in front of him. Not easy to deal with Tao Jung's forehand. Quite lethal. You can see the quick short, sh short stroke by Macbeth. 
and now up eight to five here in game one. Five, eight. It's a very difficult serve to return. Eight, just going for six. broke. Not easy to tell whether it's side spin, top spin, side spin, under spin. That was well done by McDonough handling so the net ball. So smooth. That final backhand just unleashed a heavy topspin. Oh, Yikes. He, he had that ball on his paddle. Seven, nine. Tao continuing to fight. But Macbeth able to go for a few more shots with the lead. Seven, ten. For Tao and Jong, it did not go well in doubles today. He lost all three games. Now he's a point away from dropping the opener in singles. And that'll do it for Dave McBeth in game number one. Eleven, seven. McBeth was swept by Tao back in September. McBeth is certainly one of those guys that has gotten better and more seasoned. Found his form as the season has progressed. An 11-7 impressive win in the opening game here in fourth singles. Start of the Seven day, game. felt like the smash, smash the might be zero, in trouble. Zero. But now they're up to 220. They are guaranteed themselves a lead going into the Golden Game. We know how valuable that is. If you are a Portland fan, things are looking about as bleak as they have all, all weekend long. One, oh. and Portland had its chances sure did. when they played head to head with the Smash. Big leads in second games after winning the first. But Evan, I'm going to keep going back to the Labaka third game Two, against one. Silva as the start of the run for the Smash to really right their ship and to put a lot of pressure here on the Blasters. Seven one, of the last three. eight games have gone to Texas after they started And, and the doubles was amazing. Hero and Amy. I mean, Lily and Tao and Jung are four. playing solid doubles. And just to get swept. Strong response from Five, Tao and Jung one. here in game two. What you would expect from a player of his caliber. Yeah, his forehand, he can deliver it in all directions. Great over the table. Once you deal with the forehand, his backhand can be just as tricky. Whoa, wow. look at Macbeth picking that deep serve Five, off the two. bounce and taking it down the line. Tao continuing two, just to work six. and get his forehand into play early on the point, early in the point. Second service error of the match for Dave McDonough. Two, seven. Is it meant
Mento at this point. I think a couple of issues. One is we Seven, have seen three. some air circulation going on this weekend, but right now, completely not there. So it can't be that. I think just trailing a few points, as well as when you're playing somebody like Tao and Jung, there's no real easy places to serve to. So you have to make a Seven, quality location four. of choice, and if you're not used to that, very easy halfway through the service motion to think, well, is this the right spot to go to? You can see a little hitch sometimes in player strokes. Oh, when Jong drills the corner, leads four, a four. Eight. Again, the ability to go in all directions is what makes Tao Wen Jong so strong. And over the table backhand play. Four, Who would you nine. say hits the ball harder between these two guys? Up at the table, Tao. But once Macbeth can be a half a step, maybe three feet, five feet back, Ten, it's just the four. leverage of his height. Both these players have great technique. Kind of like when we were practicing, I was mentioning that you have Ten, to use your full five. body. Both these players get every ounce of power. Look at that great backhand over the table Six, by Macbeth. Ten. Tao almost feels like he's playing like in the future, like he just he gets to the ball before he should in a lot of cases. And he takes game two, 11-6. 11-6, second So game. the score of the team tally now, 8-6. It'll be a one or three point lead for Texas at the start of the Golden Game. Meanwhile, we got a rubber game between Tao Wen Chong and David Macbeth, 60 seconds away. Game, game number serve, three, zero, zero. final game of the regular season for Tao and David in singles. One, zero. Just having some difficulty after a nice backhand, getting fully into position to make the forehand fifth ball attack. Three, one. It's been interesting over the course of the season. You know, at this stage of the match, early in game number 15, you know, we know that the golden game is beckoning. Double bounce for Macbeth. Two, takes the point. three. You look at the Bay Area bench right now, it's Maggie Tian and nobody else. They are all getting ready for yeah. the golden game. Well, on the Texas bench, you got two Play. members that are active today sitting there. Three, all. Sal and Wong, and Don Maresh, inactive today, wearing the communication head headset. To Designated coach. liaison to make sure. Articulator. 
think those head headphones do a little better better job than the Three, AirPods. Four. Getting more W's. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Four. Oh. Only had one golden point in this team match so far. That was back in game two between Ashwin and Tassahara. Five, four. Number of 11 nines. Indeed. Championship Sunday in Chicago, four, Sean. Five. Three weeks away. Texas wins the Golden Game. They will punch Six, their ticket four. officially. Oh. Macbeth wins this last game, but they lose the Golden Game. Texas would have a 19-point lead, which means Portland would need to beat Seattle either 21-0 or 20-1. to Seven, four, bless their time off. Texas in the standings. Otherwise, it will be the smash. Time out taken by the Blasters. Let's I learned something really cool drop on the Mandarin. Table tennis. I'll tell you more about it in a bit. It's a little bit geeky, and that excites me a lot. Apparently, it was a Bulgarian player who played penhold who developed this shot. And China loved it because they realized there was a chance to save this grip from extinction. And they were camera and they were recording everything and making sure that they could study it well. Ryan, you had a good question. You said, is it true that in China, oh, they call it game mode? They do. In China, the name of this sport is ping pong chiu which means ping pong ball. So still table tennis competitively, but P-I-N-G-P-A-N-G, -P ping pong, Chiu, Q-I-U. The international Time. voice of table Go. tennis, Adam Bobro. Back in his Seven, four. MC Smash. duties here in Wichita this weekend. Of course, always the colorful attire. Oh, I was asking you yesterday about your favorite Five, choppers. Seven that you've watched, and then I was sitting with Adam last night at the hotel, and we were talking about choppers, and we pulled up some YouTube videos, and he had me watching some of the greats. It was a lot of fun. Of course, with Matthew DeSantelon and Angela Guan. Six, seven. We'll see some choppers in Chicago. What a block by Macbeth. Eight, Took six. all the pace off that shot. Powenjung unsure of what was left spin-wise. And that's a beautiful over the table flip again. Nine, six. Macbeth doing a great job here in this match against Powenjung. That'll set up game point Six, for ten. Dave Macbeth to give Texas the three-point lead heading into the Golden Game. 11-6 Eleven, six Eleven, in game six, three. Two, one, Macbeth smash. able to take two out of three from Tao and Jung. And what Already a strong finish to this match. Ourselves. Texas was down four games to one early. They have won eight of the last 10 points. Smash on the brink of a playoff berth here in Wichita. So the day began with El Sayed Lachin punching the Bay Area's first place ticket in the West, then Sonora Silva 
won the opening two games against Lavaca. But game three, Sean, was when everything sort of changed. Certainly the doubles was all Texas. You no, know, Lavaca kept Texas in the game by just coming out and playing great offense. And then it has been all Texas ever since. Darrell Sal takes two out of three from Alexi Duan. Sending the Frenchman flying and flailing in pursuit. And then Dave Macbeth able to get two out of three from Tao and Jong. Taking games one and three respectively. So the big Brit has the smash in front nine to six heading into the golden game. And we will stand by for the final golden game order of the season for Golden, uh, for the Blasters and the Smash, respectively. The area is 12 and 10 in golden games this year. The Smash are 10 and 12. We've seen Texas go 2 and 0 in golden games so far this weekend, trying to make it three for three. The most exciting moment of the match, and it is about to begin. Mimi Bosica will handle the selection of the Golden Game order here in Wichita. Okay, hello everybody. So we have the Texas Smash leading against the Bay Area Blasters nine to six. That means Texas will begin with a 3-0 lead. And the serve and the first pick goes to Bay Area Blasters. Alexi. Alexi Duan is playing first. Who will play first for Texas? Daryl Sow. Daryl Sow will play first for Texas. Who will go second? Um, David Macbeth. David Macbeth will go second for Texas. Wen Zhang Tao. Wen Zhang Tao, second for Bay Area. Who will go third, coach? Uh, La Xi. El Sayed Lashin will go third. How about you, coach? Um, we go with Kazahara. One more time. Kazahara. Hiro Kasahara, and who will go fourth? Lebaka. Nishant Lebaka will go fourth. Who will go fourth for you? Lili Zhang. Lili Zhang will go fourth, which means Sonora Silva will go fifth for Bay Area, and Amy Wong for Texas Smash. Okay, good luck, everybody. Oh, oh, good luck, coach. I love it. We've got York Bitsy Gayo coaching his team Magic. from Germany. Lili Zhang will be playing. And Say the biggest surprise and twist came late with Maggie Tian choosing Lily John to face Ishant Labaka, so we get the cross gender matchups there at the end. Meanwhile, a little surprise to see uh, Maggie Tian choose Alexi Dewan to go first, but they will just play one point at the start of the Golden Game. That is the advantage of Texas able to make this the second pick Zero, three. of Blast the order. Serve. So just one point here. Okay. Right. Daryl Sow continues his four, strong zero. day at the office. Four nothing lead for Texas. So you gotta think that Texas in. likes this order right team. now. Serving Dave Macbeth, receiving Tao and John. Very strong job picking two out of three in the singles play. Nice deep push to the baseline. Dave Macbeth extending the lead to 5 0. Backhand from the Shakespearean. All Texas so far in this golden game. Blasters won the Golden Game 21-9 last time these two teams met. Long serve, well placed, and it's a first point for the Bay Area Blasters. John gets his team on the board. Second serve, outright point. Tao earns a split of the four-point sequence. Levels the playing field at two points apiece, but team-wise, it'll be Bay Area Blasters twice this year have come from behind to win a Golden Game. Once in October against Portland when they trailed 1-0. Once in December against Chicago in the interdivisional event when they trailed 3-0. Oh, 
Oh, the rip is the shot has to been the locked in today. The table, Not only Air running it down, Air but counterattacking it to the backcourt. What a great forehand reload. Tight serve, well placed, and it's one point apiece. Asaya Lashi, three serving seven. Oh, oh, Kasahara missed it. Incredible, incredible effort by Lachine just to get it back to the table. Just fighting for every single shot. Point, point still felt over with Kasahara winding up for that. And it was over, but not the way we expected. Remember that Three. turning point. Top although Kasahara does get the final point the of the four-point sequence the to earn the 2-2 two -two split. Now and coming into the arena, it is Nishant Labaka for Texas Smash. And for the Bay Another Area Blasters, the Americans match up. Lily John, eight, serving four for knee shots. In USA Table Tennis ratings, Lily is higher. Lily with the, the opening spin point. The shot up the Golden top sweep down would tie this thing eight, up. Lily has her feet moving, Lily. looking to stay away from the forehand side. Wow, time going right at it. Both points on Labaka's serve, ripped away by Lily Jong. Steals the attack from over the table. It's a two-point game. Attacking the strength of Labaka. Good return from Labaka there. Jong sent the third ball long, so the Smash will have the lead. And Silva and Wong take the table. Be a two point game or a four point game? Fire! It'll be a four point game, all four points in that pairing, one by the returner. George showing no emotion, but gotta be pleased in Lavaca's effort there to get two points against Lily. Just, just a split in somewhat of a mismatch, but again, here's another mixed singles matchup. Amy Wong serving deep. And then Silva playing offense from the backcourt. What's the key for Amy here against Sonora? Just to stay up to the table and play some angles. Both sides oh, playing there's the a little bit of frustration for Amy. Here. Wait. Generally don't see that. Wait. Smash warning. And she did get a warning. Come on, she's sending the ball to the ball kit that doesn't exist there. <laughs> the corner where the ball kit usually three sits. Three for three, Sonora Silva. Got to hit to the right side, otherwise you get the uh, mini warning. Silva going for the golden sweep. Unable to get it. Catches the tape. Amy with a really nice digging backhand push that worked so well in the doubles. Goes really game. cuts his spin Sal off the back ball. In the building. And Alex Duan well, on earlier, Duan and Sal got to play just one point. Now they'll play the full Darryl four. Sal. This will be the final four points of these two players' seasons unless we get to the ultimate golden point at 20 all. And to the racket, it carries long the tight serve for the Darryl point. Darrell Sal has had Alexi's number today. And really all season long, the two yeah, times sir, they played in singles well, matches and the Golden Game today. Working so hard, 13. sending a message to Dad. Take this, Dad. Let. Not only will we qualify for Chicago, but thanks to my efforts. Absolutely. Three straight for Dallas. Yeah, here's South. a sweep potential. Blasters. Time out, Blasters. A reminder now, that with a win in this Golden game, game, Texas will, will leave no match. doubt. The smash it's will be in the playoffs. Five points between the them now. They were long to the backhand, having under spin now after play running. Well started. The area blaster started okay. down zero be ready, three. Be ready. It's okay. No pressure. No. Play. 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 so far. The timeout has come to an end. It's one thing to say no pressure. It's another thing to feel no pressure. Nine serving 14.
Ruan able to salvage the final point, gets it back to four. 14-10. So now 14-10 as Dave McBeth enters the arena. Tawan Jong on the receive. Tawan Jong versus Dave McBeth, their final four points of the regular season. Good serve by McBeth. Side spin top spin. Tawan Jung decided to loop it, just unable to bring it down. Got to cover those top spin serves. Much better job that time. That was a huge point for Tao. Back to four instead of getting the six. Tao can win these two on his serve. He'll feel like the Blasters are right back in it. But Macbeth oh, has other ideas. So strong on the backhand side. Especially when Macbeth is over the table. Oh, and, and a knockdown. Yeah, how about that? Three of the four for Macbeth. Texas closing in. Incredible rally. And it is now 17-11. Hiromitsu Kasahara to serve to Kasahara El Sayed Lashin. Kasahara could end this on this four-point sequence. Oh, just oh. Lashin went for Kasahara it, nearly got it, but Texas now and within three. Down 18, serving 11. The smash for 11 points out of the playoff race at the start of this weekend. Banana flick and the follow-up back now three Elsa points away from going 3-0 this weekend. Including a 16-5 win on Friday against the Paddlers to send the smash to Chicago. Oh, Touch machine. It's a tight He's serve. Not serve. Quietly. No. Makes it 13-18. One more point, then Lily Jong and Nishant Labaka. Touch play catches the, the net, the Kasahara, and it is gives the smash a six-point edge. Texas smash wins this game. Will they Nishan Labaka be the one to get Texas across it's the Nishan finish Labaka line? Nishan Labaka serves to Lily Jong, 19 serving 13. Lily Jong needs at least three out of four. Well, now she needs three straight. Seven golden it's match team point team for, Texas for Texas to clinch match. a playoff spot. And we will see the Texas Smash in Chicago at the first ever MLTT Championship Weekend as Labaka closes it out. 21-13 in the Golden Game. And Texas wins the match 15-6. So convincing, great teamwork, spearheaded by Make sure David that if McBeth's you're not there great live performance. In person, you are watching on the YouTube. Smash are Major playoff Major bound. Texas will chat with a victorious Smash on the other side of a break. East or the West Coast.
The matchups for the first ever MLTT Championship weekend semifinals are set at 4 p.m. Central Time on Saturday the 27th. The Blasters will face the Revolution. And the Texas Smash just punched their ticket, earning the right to battle the Carolina Gold Rush in the nightcap. Three weeks from now, 20 days away from the semifinals. Let's chat with Dave Macbeth of the Texas Smash. Dave, congratulations. Strong performance all the way around from you and your team. Really, the momentum seemed to change both with doubles and with Nishant Labaka's win in the third game against Sonora Silva. Can you speak to the feeling yeah. on the bench when you're down 4-1 and how things shifted as that match progressed? I think the doubles has been, yeah, unbelievable since I think they were 1-0, 7-1 down on Friday. And then since they came back in that set, they've won every set since then. So that was a, a turning point. Even Nishant hanging in there. Obviously, it's difficult when he's 2-0 down, but just to take that point gives you a bit, of, bit more momentum to, yeah, somehow get a fight back because it wasn't looking good at 4-1 let's say because obviously we're all looking at the scoreboard whether we can say we're not but obviously we're all trying to count each point as it comes so. how does it feel to now know that you got players you know, yesterday we discussed a bit about this and yeah it's a lot easier than having to sit down and then hope that portland don't get enough points it's a lot better just to be straight in and now that knowing that you're going into chicago personally how will you prepare head back to england and then what will be your preparation? Do you have some practice partners yeah. there that can help you get yeah. ready? I'll definitely have a little look at the games this weekend and then probably some of the games from the crossover because we played Carolina once there. So probably just have a look at that and yeah, get as much training. It's not that, not that, long, not that long to go, sorry. So. Do you anticipate coming in a couple days early for the I'd imagine so, yeah. Because you've done that so well yeah. in all of the matches on the West yeah. Coast Conference. It's the, obviously, it's a five-hour time difference. So yeah, definitely a few days early to practice and obviously adjust the jet lag. It wasn't a great interdivisional weekend for the Smash overall, but you had the lead against Carolina going into the Golden game. You played Enzo really, yeah, yeah. Really, really tough. Yeah, All yeah, three yeah. games were tight. You won one of them, Enzo took two. I mean, what are your thoughts about matching up with the Gold Rush who have been the wire to wire best team in the league? Yeah, I think obviously there's not as much pressure on us. We just got to go and as you say, in the, in the crossover, we had our chances. So if he can repeat a performance like that, we can definitely win against them. But it'll, it'll be tough, for sure. Well, congratulations. Uh, be you. Before we let you go, what, what was the difference today against Tao? He, he swept you in September. Here we are seven, eight months later, and you take two out of three. What was the difference today? Yeah, I just tried to receive a bit better. Last time, I was, I was always just pushing the ball. Well, well. Nine, nine times out of ten, I wasn't reading a serve, and I was just giving him the half-long balls, which he likes. Today I just tried to flick a bit more and yeah, if I could keep him short rather than just give him these high half long balls. That was probably the difference today. Dave, it's been fun watching you and chatting with you this Thank weekend. You. Have a safe flight back home Thank to you your much. baby girl and we'll Thank see you, you in a few Cheers. weeks in Chicago. Thank you very much. One more look at the bracket, Sean. The championship game is three weeks away. It'll be 3 p.m. Central and these are the four teams that'll be vying for their spot on championship Sunday. Uh, we, we, we have, you know, played 87 of the 88 matches, and now we know who the semifinalists are. Well, I definitely think after seeing this match here how young and hungry the, tennis, the Texas Smash are, but again, keep an eye on the revolution, the gold rush with Enzo and Honglin, so strong in doubles. I think it might come down to the doubles going into these matches. Of course, the golden game will make the full quick case no, no ands, ifs, or buts on which team wins. And Texas has come from behind four times to win Golden Games this year. The other thing to note, Princeton and Texas both closing the season super strong. Texas going 3-0 this weekend. All the momentum in the world with the wind at their backs, literally and figuratively, here in Wichita. And uh, well, Sonora Silva had a fantastic weekend going 5-1 in singles, but Labaca's winning that third game. Helped to swing the momentum. And, well, there are a bunch of disappointed Portland Paddlers fans out there. We still have one more match in the regular season. Portland and Seattle will battle for Pacific Northwest Pride. That's coming up in about 44 minutes here from Wichita, Kansas, and the Charles Koch Arena. But the weekend belongs to the Texas Smash. As they defeat Portland on Friday, they smash Seattle 
on Saturday. And Texas takes down the Bay Area Blasters here on Sunday. 21-13, the final in the Golden Game. 15-6, the final. We'll see Texas in the playoffs. For Sean, I'm Evan. See ya.